Greetings and salutations, my Days of Our Last fans. So, wow. I'm going to break this up into three parts like I usually do. We got the meat, we got the side story, and we got the fluff. Sort of fluff and it, I guess. Uh, so let's talk about the meat of the story. This is continuing off of Ali, Eric, Nicole... Um, yeah, so Lucas is sitting there knocking at the door. He was like, I'm not leaving. I'm not leaving. Your neighbors are going to call. Like, your neighbors are going to start to complain. I'm not leaving. Um, and to be honest, I didn't really understand why they took so long to answer the door. What the hell were their plans? You know, like, they all kind of stood around. Like, you know, Ali's like, don't open the door. Don't, don't open the door. You know, my dad's going to freak out. He's, he's, he's going to tell my mom, blah, 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 blah. And Eric is just like, well, I got to. I'm sorry. And this literally took like a good minute before he decided to open the door. I'm like, what the hell are you doing? Um, so Eric gets in there. I mean, um, Lucas gets in there. And he's like, what's going on? You know, I took notes and I also kind of doing this a little bit off the dome. Um... But he's pretty much like, what's going on? Why did you leave? He he just starts going in on her. And um he goes in on her and then he and then she doesn't say anything. And Eric doesn't say anything. And so Lucas is like, Alright, you're gonna tell me what's going on. Because I'm her father and yada 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 yada. Allie's like, I'm pregnant. My whole thing is just like, how can you not see that baby bump through her sweatshirt. I don't understand. How do you miss that? That's not something. That's not something that you miss. So. I don't understand how no one saw that. But um. Anyway she's like I'm pregnant. And uh. Well Lucas just. <laughs> Let's just sit there and say. He doesn't take the news well. So they go back and forth, and the whole time I'm just sitting there thinking, and Eric is sitting there thinking, you know, the more you push, the more she's going to dig her in her heels. You got Kate that's sitting there trying to defend Ali. You got Eric that's like, you know, you need to calm down. Finally, Ali's like, you know, I don't know if I'm even going to keep this baby. And at first, people sitting there thinking that she's going to have an abortion. She's like, you know, I may decide to give it up for adoption. I don't know yet. I haven't figured this out. I mean, here's the thing. When you sit there and look at the situation, this is a teenager that got pregnant, has no idea what to do, is scared of her parents' reaction, particularly her mother, um, and her dad, because she's, you know, he's reacting the exact way that... Seriously? He's reacting the exact way that she is afraid of. Eric is like, all right, listen, we need to talk. I got to pull you to the side. And Eric is like, listen, we just need to sit there and take this one day at a time because you going in on her isn't helping anybody. You're not going to get anywhere with her like this. Um, and that, I'll just tell you too, he pulled, the, he, when she's, when, um, he's all going in on her the first time before he found out she was pregnant for whatever odd reason, he kind of like calmed her down. Um, he calmed her down. And I think it was like her, Kate calmed him down the first time. And, um, Eric calmed him down the second time. And, um, Lucas is like, listen, I'm going to go home now. Tomorrow, I want answers. And then he leaves. Allie's upset. Allie's like, you know, he's going to sit there and tell my mom. Because he at, she asked him, like, listen, just don't tell Sammy yet. And Lucas is like, well, I can't make any promises. I mean, to sit there and say, it's weird, because I can sit there, and a lot of people can sit there and say, well, you're overreacting, you need to calm down, and things of that nature. But the thing is, I'm not a parent. I don't know how I would react if my daughter, if I found out my daughter was pregnant by somebody who I don't know. I don't know if I would sit there and react in a, a rational way, in, in, in a rational way. I don't know. So, to be honest, I, I don't, you know, I can sit there and a lot of people can sit there and say he's overreacting. He's being the typical da 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 But, you know what, I'm not in the shoes, so I can't sit there and really judge too much. 
Anyway, he leaves. Um, Allie hugs Eric because she's like, you know, my mom's going to ruin my life pretty much. Which, with Sammy, from what I heard, is entirely possible. So, uh, that pretty much ends that scene. So, let's go to my second part. Actually, to tell you the truth, this is almost actually my first part. I don't know. They're kind of a tie. Uh, Sierra seems a lot smarter than I give her credit for. So she's walking around posting pictures of Gwen. I think she's talking to Ben or Jake that she's going to tell the cops if we don't get answers soon. And she runs into Brady. And she's just like, alright, I'm going to let you have it. Here we go. She pretty much figures out that Brady, you know, after she got, after she got upset that Brady, um, put her business plan in the trash, she was like, well, why would you do that? And at first, Eric, you know, at first Brady was like, oh, well, you know, I just, I'm doing what's best for the company. I'm taking the company in a, just a different direction. I know what I'm doing. And Sierra's like, now, she put the, she put the pieces together. Isn't it the same? Why would you work for Victor? You know, I understand that you want to get Xander back, but you know, what they did to you, what they did to your daughter and stuff like that, you're not willingly just going to go back and make the company thrive. So that just means that you are going to try to tank this company. She just figured it out, you know. And um, I don't know if she's really smart or if the writers were just like, we need to speed this along. But pretty much um, Sierra's like, listen... I get that you want to go after Victor and no one can blame you. But the thing is, Victor isn't the only person that you're going to be hurting throughout this whole thing. You know, there's a th there's a lots of people that is hired by this company that will lose their jobs, lose their money. Um, if you go through, if you go through this plan and I know you're not that, you know, I know you're not a, a spiteful and hateful person like that. So... And then Brady's like, so, um, I mean, it's a great theory, and I, I'm not going to confirm or deny it, but you're not going to tell Victor, all right? He just kept him to insisting, he's like, you're not going to tell Victor, right? And Sierra was like, no. So I got this other, this business plan, and I know you threw my eyes in the trash, but, well, I got a copy, so you can take a look. And Brady's like, well, that sounds like blackmail. Sierra's like, no, that's not blackmail, that's just, um... You know what, call it whatever the hell you want. Just take a look at my damn plan and, um, yeah. And Brady's like, whoa. You know, Brady's just like, well, you're not gonna, you're not gonna tell, right? And Sierra's like, listen, he had a stroke. He had a knife plunged in his chest. If I tell him this now, he may go into cardiac arrest again. So if right now, your secret is safe for me. Of course, that's just for now. Um, you know, when somebody blackmails you and tell you it's just for now, it doesn't just mean for now. Anyway, um, Sierra pretty much kind of got one over on him and knows his plan. Um, which by the way, what the hell was his actual, what was his plan? I mean, I understand that he was going to sit there and try to tank Titan, but like, how would he plan on doing that without, like, getting caught? I mean, what, the idea was to make a bunch of bad business moves and then what he gets fired and then the, the the company goes down i don't understand how anyway um so yeah that ends those two scenes let's talk about i think her name is margaret sierra um no sarah's mother um was pretty much kind of giving his her mom the lowdown about xander and what you know, what he did to her and how he's never going to forgive her. And the mom was kind of champion for Xander. Well, she was kind of champion for Xander up until a point. Because Sarah was like, listen, would you still be on Xander's side if you found out the other thing he was planning on doing? And of course, we know, and we all know what the other thing he was planning on doing. He was planning on taking her embryo and giving it to, um... Some woman, I can't remember her name is, but he didn't go through with it, but his reasoning, and she said it again, well, you were planning on having an abortion, so it's not like it really mattered. 
I, I just, I don't understand how people are, are, are championing for Xander to get back with, I mean, for Sarah to get back with Xander when he was going to take her unborn child and give it to someone else and then say, hey, it's not that big of a deal. You were planning on having an abortion anyway. Well, at that point, um, obviously, Sarah's mom was not going to be championing for Xander at this point. And um, when Xander came in, after talking to Jack, you know, Xander was like, oh, where's Sarah, whatever. And the mom, I think, I can't remember Sarah's mom, but Sarah's mom was like, she pretty much said, like, I know what you did. Like, I'm not, I'm not on your side. And by the way. Um, let's flip it back a little bit to when Xander was talking to Jack. So, Xander had this idea about putting ad space in, um, Xander's paper, uh, in, um, Jack's paper. Basically, basically sitting there saying, I'm sorry. And Jack looked at that and was like, yeah, so that's not gonna work. I'm not even gonna sit there and waste your money and my time. Um... And basically, he was like, listen, if you want to sit there and win her back, win her back through actions. Give her her time and her space. The same thing that Sarah's mom was sitting there saying to him. Um, so you go back and forth. And um, it, honestly, to tell you the truth, I feel like Xander is kind of an airhead. Because everything that um, Jack is sitting there saying to Xander, he's like, yeah, but he likes jewelry though, right? But you don't think I should sit there and try this? I'm like, dude, what? It almost comes across as a bit obsession. I'm like, you seriously need to calm the hell down. And trust me, I understand what it's like to sit there and try to get over an ex. I really do. I think we all do. But, I mean, honestly, tell you the truth, I'm not going to lie. Once your ex kisses somebody else, for me, I'm done. I, I can't speak for this guy. That is just pure obsession. Um... Also, they talk about a little bit of backstory about, I think, Jack was something with Jack and a bomb and Xander opened the door. Um, but the way he explained it, it seemed like Jack was still kind of bitter about whatever happened and Xander seemed like he was really flipping about it. Like, oh, but I opened the door. Like, like once again, he just missed the point. And I think that's the problem that I have with Xander. Is that a lot of times he just seems to miss the bigger picture. And he feels that what he does is right no matter what. Even if there's a much larger picture in play. It's like, but I did this good though, right? Like, it's like banging. It's like sitting there, I don't know, renting a car from, I don't know, one of those car rental places I'm not going to say. And then I take it back and it, it's a little scratched up and a little dent. A little dented. And they're like, well, you got to pay for it. It's like, but, but I bring it back. You know, that's literally how I feel Xander actually thinks. Um, anyway, I guess they were friends at one point. And so I guess Jack said that they can try to be friends again. I don't know. I, I have to tell you the truth. I don't really trust Xander. I know he's not on the level of Nell Benson from General Hospital, but, uh, he does not seem like a good person. Um, anyway, so after Sarah's finished talking to her mother, his mother, her mother, she meets Brady in the park, and because Sarah, you know, Sarah's mother was sitting there saying something like about, you know, how it's not good for her to be with Brady, and Brady's hurting, and this, that, and the third, and getting together could be toxic, and you guys are having an affair, sort of, maybe, I don't know, um, so Sarah pretty much tells Brady all of that. And then, um, Sarah's like, you know, we need to sit there and try something different. And Brady's like, well, what do you have in mind? And of course, uh, Sarah's idea of trying something different is having the makeout session with Brady in the park, outside in front of everyone, just PD, just whatever. Um, PDF, I think, um, whatever it's called, anyway, that's, that's her plan, I guess she wants to try to get more serious with him, um, 
some other stuff happened, but it wasn't really that much important. Oh, well, Claire... Pretty much, pretty much Claire comes to John's house with Marlene, and John is over the moon, of course. And they hang out, and they talk for a little bit. And Marlene, I guess, finished unpacking her stuff. I mean, who... I, I'm not, I'm not gonna lie. Who unpacks somebody's stuff for them? I mean, if I'm staying at someone's house... And they start unpacking my bags without me being there. I'm going to have a problem with that. I don't know what the hell goes on in Salem between that and people just, you know, coming in other people's houses unannounced. Not knocking at all. I don't get that. But anyway, Marlena found, yeah, Marlena found a picture of um, the wedding invitation that Ben and Ciara was not there giving out. And Marlene is like, well, what are you doing with this? And Claire lies, and Marlene is like, well, like, Marlene is like, well, you jealous of her. And Claire pretty much just snows him over with some BS speech. Um, something that <laughs> you can just see a mile away, and apparently it works. So I'm sitting there wondering how good of a psychiatrist is Marlena, really. I mean, John is snowed over, of course, because he just wants his granddaughter back, and it doesn't really matter. Um, they were sitting there, I guess, playing cards or whatever. And, um, Marlene, I guess, gets a call. So she heads out. And, um, what the hell happened? Claire actually goes to sleep. So, you got the grown-ups that they're talking. I think his name was Sean. Sean. And, um... John is not there talking. And Sean is about to go in, I guess, um, Claire's room to check on her. But, you know, he decides not to because he figures he's hovering. Apparently, Claire snuck out because she goes, she makes a beeline right to Ciara's house or Ciara's apartment. And when Ciara gets back home or whatever after making her call again, to sit there and say, by the way, I'm going to call the cops if we don't find this girl soon. And she opens the door, and it's Claire. And Claire's like, hi, Ciara. And Ciara just looks in, like, like fear. And I'm just sitting there thinking, okay, Ciara, I get that you don't really weigh that much, but I'm pretty sure you can take her in the fight. You're looking at her like she's the devil incarnate. And I'm just like, she is like, what, 119? The max? Anyway, um, that's pretty much where it ends off. Uh... <laughs> that's what that sound was. Um, anyway, yeah, that's pretty much it. That was pretty much the episode. Um, yeah. So, it, I guess, I guess it was average. Some good stuff in there. Um... Yeah, it's kind of, I'm kind of still mixed about it. I don't know how to feel about it. I did like the fact that Ciara knew, you know, she Ciara kind of pieced together um, Brady's plans. And I'm just sitting there thinking that Ciara does not seem like she's that much of a smart person. And I'm not going to sit there and say it because she's hot. I'm just going to sit there and say she just doesn't seem that much of a smart person. Maybe the whining that she was doing with Ben before. One second. So yeah, that's going to do it for this um, Friday's um, recap of um, Days of Our Lives. Um, one other quick announcement. So I'm not going to really be doing the Flashback Fridays anymore with GH. Um, I'm just going to wait for them to actually come back on again because I don't know. I don't know if people are really liking it that much. I don't really see a lot of people really watching it. So I'm just going to take that as a sign of people not really liking um the flashback fridays anymore um so yeah i'm not gonna really be doing that i'm just gonna be waiting until gh comes back on and then just you know you know recaps of that and recaps of this show i'm not gonna lie um this show is getting kind of interesting at first i i'll be honest i did it originally because well i wanted to talk about soaps and gh wasn't gonna be on anymore and i still want to kind of keep you know, a connection with the fans or whatever that likes 
you know, the reviews and the recaps and stuff like that. Just talking about stuff because I like talking about it, obviously. So, I was like, you know what? I'll watch Days of Our Lives. Mm, whatever. I've seen a couple episodes before, so it didn't seem that bad. Um, but it's always weird watching a new soap opera just kind of just jumping into it because you don't know names, you don't know motives, you don't know history. So, you really go into it blind. And if you don't really like it, it's not because it wasn't good. It's just because, well, you don't know what's really going on. So it took a while to actually get into it. I, I'm, I'm starting to like it a little bit more now. It is definitely different from GH, but I am, um, the characters aren't that bad. Um, I'm starting to like some of the characters. Again, Steve. John is weird. I like John, even though he, I, I like John, I think it's just because he has that very old school Western cowboy kind of style. I don't know if that makes any sense, but um, I, I would just sit there and say that this soap opera is definitely growing on me. And um, I'm just going to see where it goes. So, that's going to do it for this episode, again, um, of Recap. Have a good day, good night, depending on when you're watching this. Be safe, marry, all that good stuff. And I will catch you in next Recap. Have a good weekend.